Well, hello, everyone, and welcome this evening to this RISE interview, a very special one today, with Dr. Anthony Harper, who is a Christian White House correspondent, and he is a journalist for IMC News. Welcome, Anthony. It's great to, say, uh, to talk with you, uh, David, to join you. And, uh, you know, IMC News, by the way, is the Intermountain Christian News, uh, evangelical Christian newspaper, and reporting truth at the White House and now the State Department. But uh, imcnews.org is our website. And, we, of course, we have a YouTube channel of, uh, you know, Intermountain Christian News is the channel name, also on Rumble. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, talking with you, David, about Israel. Yeah, this is, thank you for sharing that. And uh, if anyone wants to go and check Anthony Harper out, uh, he does some great content there. And he's there today in Washington, D.C. And he asks questions uh, of a Christian interest at the White House. So he's, he's got a very important role. And, you know, with everything going on, and I'm sure the viewers have seen just the terrible terrible brutal attacks that took place on october the 7th in israel and mm -hmm. the res response of israel that's going on right now which is all over the news um but this this issue which i want to just touch on first anthony that what happened on october the 7th i mean it's is really close to our heart isn't it because we've we've actually been to one of those kibbutzes on the border of gaza and, and we've met a couple of the locals who are really nice people who we don't actually know if they're still alive. Yeah, it's very alarming, very disturbing. We don't know their whereabouts, and we hope and we pray that they are alive and, and have not been harmed. I know that they have children. So uh, I, we, we've heard a lot of disturbing news, seen video, uh, graphic uh, images and video of uh, babies killed, and decapitated, burned alive, and and family members killed. Uh, it, it is just so so horrific, so barbaric. It reminds me of ISIS in many ways, and very demonic driven. And they've got the similar mentality uh, to sadly what we saw in Nazi Germany, right? The the way that the attacks were were conducted the exquisite level of evil to cause as much trauma as possible. It's just very barbaric, wasn't it? It truly was. So, so evil. And it does remind us of, of Hitler, of the, uh, the, the, the terrible things that they did to the Jewish people. So we were talking the other day about, is there any anything that you think could have helped in preventing such attack i mean we, we mentioned the other day about maybe some of the kibbutz around the gaza area because it's in such a dangerous place maybe the uh, residents could be armed or something like that right that, that is true what israel could have done and what they don't is what they don't do is make uh, guns readily available to israel citizens uh, is israeli people more than any people in the world should be trained and know how to use a gun and, and have guns available to, to defend themselves. And from my understanding, none of the kibbutzes uh, were, had stockpiles of good we uh, weapons, didn't have a, a prominent uh, IDF presence. And there should have been a prominent uh, IDF presence at every kibbutz along the border. Very unwise and actually very dangerous for kibbutz workers. And you and I, we were meeting with that, that family, the kibbutz workers, and and, and, and they're not very far from the Gaza border. They went very far. I mean, maybe a, a couple of miles. And they could be shot at with high-powered rifles while they're trying to do farm work. So it really was not a very, a very good idea in the first place to have kibbutzes so close to this Gaza border where they could be shot at and killed and, and not to uh, allow them to have these weapons to defend themselves. But... Um, you know, also that could have been, that could have prevented this, I'm convinced, David, is that uh, if there wasn't U.S. funding or other nations funding for those UN, it, the U.N. schools called UNRWA, that stands for United Nations Relief Works Agency, um, you know, those schools are inciting kids to violence against the Jewish people. 
And probably many of the Hamas people were trained in those UNRWA schools. They learned hate at the UNRWA schools. And, and Hamas controls UNRWA schools in Gaza. And the Palestinian Authority is a terrorist organization as well. It is very upsetting to think about the U.S. government giving money to terrorist organizations, giving humanitarian aid. You know, the humanitarian aid coming into Gaza with the U.S. wants to get in and other nations. They don't have any guarantee that this uh, aid would get directly to, to the innocent, to the ones that need it. And once they get it, wouldn't uh, most likely Hamas steal it from them and take it? Right. So you're saying that there's a real undercurrent, there's an underbelly of this problem where through these schools that are run by the United Nations, that uh, they're actually indoctrinating and allowing education to come through their schools, which is teaching hatred against Jewish people uh, and probably can, you know, add to what we saw on October the 7th, that, that kind of thing is being put into their minds from a young age. Yes, and, and, and clearly there's a lot of research been done. Senator James Rich of Idaho, my senator, and I'm, I'm from the state of Idaho, he was the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. And he is the key person in the Congress uh, for the U.S. about UNRWA, about the Palestinian Authority. So people can uh, look at his website, Senator James Rich, and uh, my Israel news, news source, uh, Israel reporter with uh, uh, David Vedin and Israel Behind the News. Dot com. So israelbehindthenews.com has a lot of information, uh, you know, revealing and exposing the anti-Semitic, the, the, hate, the hateful attitudes of the UNRWA schools, uh, the UN, as well as Palestinian Authority. And, and we know uh, Iran has been labeled, and it is a terrorist organization, uh, very very alarming on many fronts. And, you know, what really is troubling also is that I had a premonition about the attack the night before the attack. And I knew that they would be attacked, Israel would be attacked in a prominent Jewish holiday. Now that, wow. the, that, that week was Yom Kippur. And I was feeling very uncomfortable. And I was expecting something to go wrong. And, and that, that premonition played out to be true. There could be, there could have been actually a lot of people that had premonitions before the attack that it would, that it would happen. Yeah, it seems, to, and that's absolutely, you know, the fact that you knew that beforehand is quite something. But it's, it definitely seems to have been planned on specifically on Jewish holiday on the Shabbat, like has been done in the past to uh, to catch Israel as much surprise as possible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But so, and, the, and you mentioned Iran, and, and really what some of these pro Palestine protesters who do hold up uh, slogans that are promoting and inciting violence all across the world, uh, that what they don't seem to realize is that some of these groups that they seem to be supporting, they don't realize necessarily are backed by Iran. You know, they're, they're specifically, they're proxy groups that Iran use to inflict violence and terror in, in different parts of the world. Yes, I mean, uh, Iran is the head of the snake in, the, in this issue. Iran has to be dealt with. And it's good that the U.S. sees clearly that Iran is a, a terrorist regime and uh, they're, they're sponsoring this war and, and they have, have a lot to do with what happened in Gaza. I mean, Iran is very, and the Ayatollah specifically, very hateful of Israel and jealous of Israel. Actually, there are many uh, Arab countries that are uh, and have been jealous of Israel. And it's just such a small area. And Israel has been blessed in many ways. And I want to remind people that in Genesis 12, 3, it talks about blessings for those that bless Abraham and his seed, which represents Israel, and curses for those that curse Abraham and his seed, which is Israel. And, and there's a warning about dividing the land. You, you, you know, uh, you, uh, President Biden recently had a trip to Israel, and he had the nerve, the insensitivity, 
to bring up this idea of dividing their land with terrorists. This whole yeah. Palestinian state to state solution, which is not a solution whatsoever. And uh, I think people need to, to be aware of the Jewish scripture of Joel 3 2 about the warning of dividing the land, which states, For God enters into judgment in the valley of Jehoshaphat, the nations that scatter his people and divide up his land. And that's exactly what would happen with this so called Palestinian two state solution, which I often refer to, David, as a delusion. Right, because it doesn't really make sense if you think about it, does it? Because you can't negotiate with terror groups. And if, for example, Hamas rule Gaza, and they do rule Gaza, Israel do not occupy Gaza, as some people claim, um, Hamas rule it, and, and they are a prescribed terror organisation, how can you have a peaceful two state with a group with groups that want nothing but to annihilate the jews out of israel because that is their their aim yes we, we know that israel uh withdrew from gaza and that's not working very well is it and so uh logically and actually it's illogical uh, to to think that uh, israel withdrew withdrew um from more land that there would be more peace that is crazy. Right, yeah, and we've seen the result of that. Uh, what do you think, also, I want to ask you about some of these media organisations, because I know you work alongside a lot of these type of organisations like CNN and BBC, maybe. Uh, for example, BBC over here, they refuse to uh, use the word terrorism when they're talking about Hamas. They call them a Palestinian militant group or or you've got the left-wing pro protesters who call them uh, resistance groups. What do you think about this language that refuses to call them terrorists? Well, I often actually get get the uh, response from media people at the White House or the State Department, and, and they, and in the State Department officials or White House, they, they clearly say what, what you said, uh, that that is not really a terrorist organization. And by the way, I was uh, I was in, in a meeting at the State Department this week, which uh, would have been September 23rd, a Monday. And the State Department spokesperson, when I asked them about uh, they're they're giving humanitarian aid to terrorist organizations of uh, and regime like Iran and uh, as well as um, the Palestinian Authority and UNRWA. He said blatantly that we don't give humanitarian aid to terrorist uh, groups, organizations, when in fact they do. By their own words, they have said on a September 12th meeting in the press State Department uh, this year, uh, 2023, the spokesman Matthew Miller said money uh, that was given to Iran, the $6 billion, actually was not given specifically, but he said, oh, this is Iran's money. And uh, so we've unfroze it and they can use it for only humanitarian reasons. So that really is humanitarian aid. So he is denying the reality out of their own words, saying that they they are giving humanitarian aid. And and, and clearly uh, also uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken said about the U.S. restoring Palestinian, uh, 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 res restoring humanitarian aid to the Palestinian Authority. This is this has happened. $235 million humanitarian, so-called humanitarian aid to the Palestinian Authority, which is, by the way, of the agency that governs Palestinians. So, but the thing is, is, is people will say, of course, um, that other people from the surrounding countries got into the land, it got a bit complicated. Um, it is a difficult situation, as you say, uh, when you've got aid money that is siphoned by corrupt leadership in the Palestine in the Arab community. Uh, so, how would you say we can resolve this issue? Because obviously, for example, in Gaza, you've got two thousand Christians, which is not many compared to two million people, uh, but you have got civilians there that don't support Hamas. So how, how do you think you could best help these people? 
other than the best way is to have oversight. It has, the oversight has to be by legitimate uh, overseers in that land, in that area where the aid is being given to, to make sure that it's not uh, taken away by these these uh, evil people. Um, uh, you know, Hamas, the terrorist group, in, that is preventing people uh, from getting out of Gaza. It's, it's, it's very uh, disturbing how they use people as human shields. So this no. is the, this is the answer. If we're going to give aid to uh, you know to that group of people that refer to themselves as Palestinians, that that we uh, do it with uh, responsible and uh, I, I think having key church leaders of respectable uh, Christian churches or or uh, respectable uh, good synagogues uh, leaders that understand Israel's history for them to be. Uh, key players in oversight of this, uh, and and that country protecting those people that are administering this uh, humanitarian aid. So that's the only way that I can yeah. see it possible. Hamas has not shown any willingness, to my to my knowledge and, and to date, to have uh, you know church leaders in Gaza distributing this and staying there the whole process. Uh, of that time to make sure they are getting it and using it. We have to have that continual presence on the ground, uh, overseeing this by credible people. Yes, and um, I think the the accusation that some people make is if you stand up for Israel's right to exist, and you care about the Jewish people, they say that automatically means you don't care about uh, the Arab people, which is obviously not true. And I think, yeah, that's a good idea. And essentially what we're saying is that the best thing for those people, the civilians in Gaza who don't support that, because they don't all support that, even though it's difficult for them to speak out against Hamas, because they would probably risk their lives for doing so. Uh, but the best yeah, but thing for them... Their lives would be in danger if they spoke out uh, in, in opposition to Hamas. There is no free speech in Gaza. Right. So the best thing for them is for them to be free from Hamas, basically. Well, clearly Hamas has abused them. And uh, uh, and I think about the Ayatollah abusing the people in Iran, uh, their freedoms. Uh, there's yeah. no free speech, no right to bear arms. Um, you know, we're endowed by our creator by certain un unalienable rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Here in the U.S. and the founding fathers of America knew that. That we were, we were uh, in, uh, endowed by our Creator, and I, of course, give credit to Jesus, our Messiah, uh, for that. But um, you know, uh, I I want to honor God and all this, and and all of your listeners may not be aware that President Lincoln uh, has a solution, not only for America, but would also be for Israel. When President Lincoln said, "Our nation has forgotten God. We have become too proud and arrogant." too proud to pray to the one that created us. And uh, and he said, we've been intoxicated with unbroken success. And we need to repent of our many national sins in hopes that God would have mercy on us and forgive us. I think it's just so important for people to read what President Lincoln had to say in the middle of the Civil War, April, uh, April 30th, 1865. You can read that at the top of our website, imcnews.org. Uh, you can do a search for Intermountain Christian News for the website link. But he also quoted from the scripture, a Jewish scripture, uh, David, uh, Psalm 33, 12, which states, blessed only are those nations whose God is the Lord. Right. And, and I think as difficult as this is, this uh, period of time that Israel is going through and, and the Gazan civilians, um, Ultimately, we hope and pray that through this dark time that many people will come to know Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Uh, that, that is our hope, uh, our only Messiah, uh, Yeshua, uh, Jesus, uh, alone can save us from our sins. And I love that Jewish prophecy about his return to the Mount of Olives in victory. It's in Zechariah chapter 14. I encourage people to read that. And my favorite Bible verse of all 
David, for your listeners, is uh, Psalm 27.4. Look up Psalm 27.4. This is of King David, and he says, For this one thing I seek after, I do seek, is to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon his beauty, and to inquire of him in his temple. And that is my desire, to be with him, uh, to dwell in the house of the Lord. And especially I'm drawn to the beauty of the Lord as King David was and still is. Amen. Very, very true. Thank you, Anthony. Appreciate that encouragement. And um, that is our prayer to uh, for Israel, for God's protection over Israel, but also for all these, um, you know, the people that they'll come back to their Messiah, the Mashiach. And for the surrounding peoples that they would find Jesus and and escape from uh, horrible situations and ideologies, and um, that they'll come to know the peace of Jesus Christ. And before we go, I just want to ask you one more question. This is really very relevant to this moment. We see limited incursions from Israel uh, that suggest that they may be looking to go into a, as a ground invasion. Um, I know we spoke about the the other day. What are, what are some of the dangers that may face the IDF soldiers as they look to go into Gaza, and and um, what Hamas might kind of have set up for them? Well, it, it would be very unwise for them going and going to Gaza because this, um, and if they're not, if they haven't done uh, enough be, beforehand. And, and taking out, talked about that issue that there has to be a lot of preparation for this. Um, I, I see the danger of uh, of this in that that Hamas is and has been expecting this for quite some time for Israel to enter Gaza. Gaza, so they have plans for booby traps uh, to have the area mined, and they have snipers that that are uh, on ready uh, to be positioned in buildings to uh, to um, Kill that Israeli defense ground forces. So, they uh, Israel has to have some way of dealing ahead of uh, time with the sniper danger, as well as the mining of the streets and buildings, and of course the tunnels. It would be very unwise to go into the tunnels because the tunnels are booby trapped. What Israel can do is blow a lot of uh, mace uh, mace gas into the tunnels a lot of mace gas to make them all cry and come out of the tunnels, maybe. Right, and it, it adds an extra complexity that some of the hostages might be down there because, we, you know, we can't forget that we've got this whole 200 hostage situation, which is just another dynamic that makes the whole thing a lot harder. There, there's no easy way out of this unless the God of Israel sends confusion um, that's the Hamas, the enemy's camp uh, in, in Iran, uh, to uh, where they turn on each other. This is the story of Gideon, um, that where the God sends an angel to Israel's enemies, and uh, they turn on each other. And Israel doesn't have to lift a finger to defend to to, to uh, defend themselves, because they all de the enemies uh, destroy themselves. Right? Uh, could you? Finish off the conversation by just saying a quick prayer for the situation. I want to, to and before I pray here, just briefly, is to to, to mention that that I and, and many others see uh, the the people, the the leaders of Hamas that uh, have a disrespect for the God, the God of Israel, the God in general, uh, that they represent wickedness and. and uh, they represent wickedness because they, they stand for not the principles of God, the true God, in a, who is a God of love. And so Hamas are not actually, and they're not following their own religion. And there's a reference about Jesus, respecting the prophet Jesus in the Quran. But Hamas does not respect Jesus either. So it would be great if a lot of Muslims uh, in the Arab world's would condemn this uh, and, and label uh, Hamas as a terrorist organization, as well as some other uh, groups, Hezbollah and uh, 
uh, Ayatollah or, or Iran in this situation. And so let me pray right now. We want people to know that we love all people. We even love Hamas, members of Hamas. We we don't want them to perish because in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So it's God's desire not for Hamas to end up in hell, not for anyone to end up in hell. So it's not too late for Hamas members to repent and turn to Jesus to save them from their sins and, and be a good person, to be a loving person. It, it, it isn't impossible for Hamas members to have a change of heart in following God, the true God, God of love and compassion. So let me pray right now and, and for all those adversaries, uh, and uh, we know it's not God's will for them to perish. So Father, we ask in Yeshua of Nazareth, name by Holy Spirit, it's uh, influence to do wrong, to hurt innocent people. We pray protection of our enemies from this deception, that they will have uh, be called to repentance in honoring you, the God of love, of compassion. And so please intervene. Uh, we pray for uh, everyone involved. Pray for Israel, for the peace of Jerusalem, for the Israel government, for people who are around the world that are experiencing op oppression, that they find their hope in Yeshua, in Jesus, to save them. We pray protection over those that are being terrorized right now in prisons, elsewhere, in Gaza, uh, throughout the Middle East, throughout the world. So many people are suffering. We pray that people all around the world will find everlasting life in Jesus. So please help those that don't know Jesus, Yeshua, as their Savior now, to be honest and humble before you and ask for forgiveness of their sins, to ask you to be their Savior and Lord, to live in their heart, to save them from their sins today. And I know from your word that they will be saved if they cry out to you. And all for your glory. Amen. And want to mention there's a, a salvation website if people want to know more about a personal relationship with Jesus. There's a toll-free number. It's one triple eight need him uh, in here in the US, triple eight need him. And the website is needhim.org. Thank you, Anthony. It's a beautiful prayer. And um, yeah, as I say, I, I've seen a few testimonies, one of a guy from ISIS, one of a guy from Hezbollah. Chris Mitchell had this guy from Hezbollah, ex-Hezbollah, who uh, came on his show. And uh, he had found salvation in Jesus despite being part of that group. And then he, God gave him a love for Israel. And that's amazing to see how God changes people's hearts. It is. Well, just to finally make sure everyone knows that we love members of Hamas and we, we love the Ayatollah. We love everyone in this world and praying that they will find Jesus to save them from their sins today so that they don't end up in hell. God does not want anyone to perish. Amen. And of course, we also pray for the protection of Israel at this time. And that they, uh, you know, if this, this war opens up on a multi front, which is seems possible, uh, that Israel would be protected. Yeah, that's a, a final prayer too. Father, please uh, surround Israel, protect Israel from, from all evil. Uh, from protection, help for Israel to uh, be able to humble themselves before you just fully seek you with their whole heart and they will find you and you will defend them. Uh, help for them, for Israel to cry out to you to save them. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Anthony Harper. Dr. Anthony Harper there from IMC News and the White House. Thank you for joining us today. Appreciate the conversation. Great to join you, David.
God bless you and your audience with good health, encouragement in Jesus, Yeshua. And I'd encourage you all to learn the Israeli National Anthem. For those that don't know that, Hatikva means the hope. And uh, it's, it means, uh, for the Jew looking towards the east, as the heart beats true, uh, the 2,000-year-old hope will not be lost to the free in the land of Zion and Jerusalem. And uh, for those that like music, I got to sing Over the Rainbow with a band. And Over the Rainbow was written by Jewish people. But it was before it, it, Hitler uh, became uh, totally in control. The Jewish heart was to be free in the land of Zion and Jerusalem. And you look at the lyrics in Over the Rainbow, and they talk, and the lyrics talk about, uh, you know, birds are on the chimney tops and birds fly uh, they, they want to, to fly way above the chimney tops and that desire to be free. And that's what's in the Israeli National Anthem, to live free in the land of Zion and Jerusalem. Maybe you could uh, finish us off by singing the Hatikva to our Jewish viewers. Okay, well, this is in Hebrew. I mentioned what it is in English. And by the way, when you go to our YouTube channel, Intermountain Christian News, you can see me singing Hatikva in Ben Gurion Airport at the White House and elsewhere, but here it is. Thank you. Very well done, Anthony. And for any Jewish uh, Israeli viewers, you know, the, let that be a, a, a message from us today that we're standing with you, we're thinking of you, we're praying for you, and uh, yeah, God bless you all.